Hey, hey, Sammy Do coming to you live from Precious World Office Studios. Real estate mentor and coach and investor, founder of the Real Estate Wholesale Helpline. I want to talk to you today about prerequis prerequisites that are necessary uh, in order to be in the real estate investing business. If you uh, ever thought about getting into the real estate investing business or if you are in the business and still trying to get your first or second deal, uh, you definitely want to subscribe to this channel because we come to you from a grassroots standpoint, giving you the golden nuggets, the secret sauce that you're not getting anywhere else. And I want to talk to you about the two prerequisites uh, to be in this business. Sammy Stay Duke, tuned. live from Precious World Studios, doing it again, dropping another golden nugget. isn't for everybody not everybody's cut out for this business so without these two requisites if you can't acquire these prerequisites this could be a money pit for you so this is why I want to give you the raw grassroots truth about how uh, what you would need in order to be successful in this business okay so we're talking about uh, the two prerequisites that are required to get your real estate business going um, and I've already talked about uh, the first prerequisite is that you need a level of education. Um, and the best way to get a level of education really is to get a mentor unless you want to spend a lot of money. Uh, but today I want to talk about the second prerequisite and that is a set of skill sets. And, <clears throat> and in particular, uh, I want to talk about this one particular skill set that is extremely critical to being in this business and that's a skill set of being creative, uh, the creativity, um, being able to think outside of the box. Uh, in this business, um, <laughs> ironically, uh, things are in black and white. In other words, what's in the contract is what goes down. That's what's legally binding. However, the creative portion comes in as to being creative in the contract uh, and whatever those strategies, those clauses, those uh, contingencies are, uh, that's the key in uh, how, you, how you put a contract together. Uh, being creative in how do you acquire a property. Being creative in to, as to how do you uh, exit a property. Being creative in how do you have the conversation uh, with a seller, being creative and how do you have a conversation with a buyer. Being creative is very, very important in this business um, and, 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 and thinking in the black and white uh, should only be the end product but not the uh, beginning of the product. Uh, by that I mean in the beginning you need to think in gray and whatever uh, becomes uh, the resolute answers to what you've come up with in the gray then it transfers to the black and white got a text going off here one of my mentees listen um, I want to give you a couple of tips on uh, how you can kind of develop a creativity skill set because I'm gonna tell you again skill sets are necessary in this business just as any other profession and if you don't have the certain skill sets for it, if, if you can't run a 100 meter dash in 10 seconds or less, you're, you're not going to be the, the, the gold medal champion, okay? Um, there's only a handful of folks that can do that, right? Real estate business is the same way. If you don't have certain skill sets, being creative, creativity, having a creative mind, is another skill set if you don't have certain skill sets you're not going to be successful in, in real estate investing and wholesaling so I want to give you uh, three uh, points that uh, you can do to help develop 
uh, the creativity skill set if you don't already have it. Uh, and if you do have it, to help kind of, uh, you know, narrow in, home in, fine tune the skills uh, for real estate investing. First one is um, you want to be analytical. You want to understand what is the mission? What is it that you're trying to accomplish? Whether it's from a marketing standpoint, whether it's from a contract standpoint, whether it's from an exit strategy standpoint, what is it that you are trying to accomplish? And what is the end desired result of what you are trying to accomplish? So I like to kind of reverse engineer uh, the result in order to think about what the creative solutions would be. Um, so I like to think about the end first. Uh, <laughs> that sounds almost spiritual. He formed the end before he formed the beginning. Amen. <laughs> but uh, from an analytical standpoint, I like to think about the end first and then work on how do you get there? What are the ways of being able to get there? In fact, that takes me to point number two, which means you have to be open minded. Uh, you've got to be able to think outside the box. You've got to be able to Think about things that no one else has considered. You've got to be able to see outside of the black and white. The black and white is there for a reason, but you have to think outside of black and white. Like I said earlier, you have to kind of think in the gray as well. I'm not talking about illegal and doing anything illicit or illegal. What I'm talking about is anything that is legal, think about it, but just don't think about it like everybody else would. Think about it with a open mind. Uh, I know a couple of my students have a military background and so their challenge in trying to learn this business is getting them to think outside of the rigidness of the black and white. What does the SOP says, you know, the standard operating procedure. Uh, if, if the square doesn't fit in the circle, uh, then it doesn't work, right? Uh, if, 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 if it's not in the black and white, it doesn't work. I have to work with my uh, students that are prior veterans, God bless them, uh, in order to think outside of the box, in order to think a little bit more in the gray. It's a little bit of a challenge, but it's a worthwhile challenge because it's just another skill set that you learn as you begin to, as you continue to grow in your wisdom. Um, so, uh, if you don't have a creative mindset and if you can't be open-minded, that's something you want to work on. Uh, the third uh, portion, uh, the third point that I want to make is after you, you've done some of the analytics and, you, and you've became open-minded to try to uh, think about different ways to get to that end result, then you want to make sure that that solves the problem. You want to make sure you're in a problem solving. How do you get there to that desired result? How do you get to that end result? And when you take those three items, at least those three, there's probably a few more, but those I think are the biggest three rocks to help you develop a more creative uh, mindset. When you take those three, you're going to be well on your way to being able to develop that particular skill set in order to do your real estate investing business. You, you, you want to be analytical, you want to be open-minded, you want to problem solve. Think about what the problem that you're trying to solve and how many different ways you can get there legally and make it happen. Make it happen. Um, oftentimes, uh, and here's a, here's a great example. Uh, years ago, uh, when uh, real estate investing kind of got on social media and everybody started understanding how important the marketing aspect of your business is um, you know someone decided they're going to send out letters and do a letter campaign and of course letter campaigns work and what happened everybody else started doing letter campaigns because folks were talking about it on social media so everybody started doing letter campaigns so then what happened was all the letters were looking the same to the prospects to the to the motivated sellers so they had no clue which way to go and so somebody came out with the Brainiac ideal, uh, and it was a very creative solution. Well, I've got to do something to stand out. I've got to do something to stand out. So what they did, they said, I'm going to use a, a yellow piece of paper, and I'm going to handwrite it. 
I'm going to use a yellow piece of paper. I'm going to handwrite it because yellow, first of all, is going to stand out from all the other white paste pieces of paper that everybody's getting. And then second, I'm going to handwrite it, so that's going to make it a little, a little bit more personable. And that's how, uh, for those of you ha who have heard the uh, yellow letter campaign, that's how that campaign has come to be. It was a creative solution to a problem. The problem was everybody's doing the same type of marketing with uh, letters. How do I make my letter stand out? <laughs> right? Uh, now, <laughs> here's the thing. This day and age, everybody's doing the yellow letters. So guess what? Yellow letters not really working like they used to. So now, what do you do outside of that? What? How do you create something different to get the attention that everybody else is seeking, but you want the attention for yourself? So being creative uh, is very, very important. And I'm going to tell you, creativity is secret sauce to your business creativity is secret sauce to your business this is what separates you from anybody and everybody else you don't find uh, Home Depot and Lowe's for instance when they're putting out their Black Friday uh, newspaper ads you don't find them putting that out before Black Friday it, it comes out the morning of because they don't want the other competitor seeing the secret sauce of their product and their prices you got to treat your business the same way. There are certain things of your business that are confidential. You will find that oftentimes when these gurus are putting on these major seminars and these classes and having two and three hundred people show up so they can have their little meetup and session about what's going on and how it's working and all this kind of stuff, you will find that oftentimes they're putting out older and dated uh, strategies and techniques you will find oftentimes because no one is really putting out what is currently working in their business because that keeps them competitively advantaged um, amongst their peers uh, it, and if not to mention it's just a stupid business decision to let that kind of thing out so just wanted to give you a little bit of insight on this particular skill set of being able to have a creative skill set and if you like this information, please like the video. Uh, also, uh, as a reminder, subscribe to this channel. We are a mentoring coaching channel. And uh, to try to help you get your business off the ground. It's our goal to help you get uh, your first deal in 30 to 60 days, providing that you accept our mentorship. So if you're interested in, in setting a 30-minute free consult, make sure you click the link in the description, the real estate wholesale helpline to get on my calendar good news is you'll be talking to me directly and not some salesperson and i can only take on a handful a month because i am still in the business myself and need my time for my business so until then i'll see you at the top because the bottom sure is crowded hey hey sammy do do -ru, back at you hey uh are you smelling what i'm cooking are you picking up what i'm putting down you like these golden nuggets that we are dropping at you well, if you do, please like the video that you just seen. Also, subscribe to this platform. You can do that by hitting the red uh, subscribe now button somewhere here or there. Uh, look for it. Hit the subscribe button. Uh, that would encourage me to continue to put out uh, more content like this. And uh, check out my library of other videos as well. Also, <laughs> don't forget, if you need to set your appointment, the link is in the description. Real Estate Wholesale Helpline. And until then... I will see you at the top because the bottom sure is crowded. God bless Sammy. Doom, doom, doom. Out.